What is up you guys? We are in my parents' home in middle of nowhere, Alabama. And today, right now, in this moment, we are working on this table for my sister. Now, 36 by, no, this has gotta be like, it might be 36 by 60. Now this is like 36 by 50, maybe, maybe 36 by 50. It's a little bit bigger than 48, I'm he sure. He goes up there yelling at me so we could go upstairs because he's been bothering my mom's dog. Hold on, miss. So what I'm doing is there's like laminate that's chipped off and like it looks bad because there's some on and some off. So I'm just like running my knife away from me and just running it right along the edge. I could probably heat this up and it would probably just pop off of here, but it's so old that it's literally just coming off as I scrape it. There you go. Now you have more of a clean edge so that, and then you don't have to worry about if somebody's picking at it, it would, it probably would have came over the edge and just stopped and then there probably would have been a little gap. So then if somebody were to pick at it, they'd probably pick that right up. So, be careful with knives. So the first step that we did was that um, we tarped this whole floor area because resin on floors is not fun unless you're planning on actually resinating your floor. Sorry, I have to let little dog up so he can go bother the big dogs. So, um, now that we have this like edge cleaned off, it's time to what? I would just tape a little bit more. I would, I would probably tape off all the legs, but there's such a hangover that I don't. Well, I don't we can see take it. alcohol and. Yeah, I don't see it getting on here. And if we decide to after, we'll just sand it down and paint the legs a solid color, like mm. white. Because what she wants on this table is a white and silver marble granite. Isn't that a fun sound? Um, look. So I will. So I will see you guys in the next segment. What? Talk about what we're doing. I'm just sanding this top because I'm sure that it has years and years of life stuff on it. Life. And I'd like to give it a little texture so that the primer will, will stay so we can do a couple layers. What is that? This is sandpaper. I believe this is a... Uh, An iron? No. It's a sanding block. Oh. Gum rubber grout float. Hmm. But I taped some 60 grit on here. <laughs> now, it's that. market. So it's finally time to resin this bad boy right here. This is Jessica's dining room table. It's probably a, what did we say it was? I would say like a 36 by 50. I don't know. It's hard to say it. Bigger than 48. I know that. Okay. This table that is a bigger than 48, um, she requested a white, silver, marble. It could be 36 by 40, I don't know. So I'm gonna do... You can go 
come over here just for a minute, and then once we get going, you gotta get. So I think for this, we're gonna start out with about 48 inches. Nope, 48 ounces. I think that would be too much. Okay, so 36 do... ounces. All right, so we're starting with 48 ounces. Um, prior to this, Jeff set the resin in front of a space heater, that one right there, in order to thin um, the resin just a little bit because it is colder here. So it helps the resin to be more workable. Also, prior to um, us filming right now, we, sorry, I'm just taking you guys off of the tripod. No, I'm not because I can't get it undone. Maybe I can. Hold on. You guys can hear Cujo up there. So prior to right now, yesterday, we did the prep work for this table, which was to sand it and paint it with this primer. It, this one in particular is from Zinser. It's a bullseye, one, two, three primer for all surfaces. It's a water-based interior primer. Um, it also acts as a bonding agent so that there's a tooth for the resin to stick to. We also put down a tarp on the floor, protected the legs, and taped um, under, oops, sorry, got blurry. We taped under the table so that cleanup will be a lot easier. If we had a power tool, that would have been ideal, but I didn't bring it. Um, you have to make sure that you mix your resin thoroughly and completely because if you don't, you'll end up with weak spots in your resin, which is not a good thing. If you end up with a weak spot, you'll have to basically clean it out, sand it, and do a top coat. And it may mess up your design depending on where the weak spot is. So you have to make sure you fully incorporate the part A and part B together making sure to scrape the sides, the bottom of your bucket, and whatever stir stick you're using because it'll stick to all those. So you wanna make sure that everything is fully incorporated. The resin that we're using today, cause I don't have my countertop resin, is Stone Coats Art Coat. It has a lot of the properties of the countertop resin. And I love working with it. It's the best resin I know of. Um, if you are interested in this resin, Use the code YALL, Y-A-L-L, in all capitals so that you can get $30 off of your $80 order. Just make sure you have $80 in your cart when you put the code in so that you can get your discount. It's awesome. That includes the base tints as well. Also awesome. Best on the market in our opinion. Um, you don't have to do things our way. We're not like um, professional table or countertop makers. Um, we're not the uh, authority on this in any way. We just are showing you guys how we do it our way. The first color we're mixing up is a color called, where is it? Graphite? Yes. See, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that because if we put this down and then we put, we're going to have to spread that white over everything. I don't, I don't know how that's going to like, you know what I'm saying? Push off and like, we have to. B, if you don't want to do it that way, we don't have to do it that way. Idea. Okay. So the first color he mixed up is called graphite. It is by Just Resin. It's a paste. It works awesomely. It doesn't take a lot um, to tint your resin. 
We've also mixed up in the spritz bottle 91% alcohol and some metal powder. This metal powder in particular is from Mona Lisa products. So we're taking the rest of, um, yeah, we always like to keep some on the side in case we need to make more of one color or another so we don't have to mix up a whole new batch. So he's making the majority in white since the request is for white and silver marble. The graphite color is like a luster, so that'll add some shimmer sparkle to it. And obviously the silver is going to have some shimmery, sparkly goodness as well. And always make sure you have a rag full of uh, alcohol, 91% at least. I mean, I guess you can use 70. It just gets the resin, the paints off your hands so you don't grab stuff and it gets sticky and messy. And just make sure you don't lift, leave that next to your torch or use it next to your torch. It will set on fire and you will not have a good day. It'd be a very bad day for sure. This is my lovely sister, Jessica. Hello. She taught me how to make soap yesterday. And of course, our amazing mascot is here. What's up, Moose? Are you adorable? Know it? Cool. Titan's over here too, observing the situation. How do you call me? He's like, uh, excuse me. Um, I have a question for you. No, right Sorry, I didn't mean to hype him up. If I was more prepared, I would have a notched trowel with us so that we can even more mix our resin once you lay it out you can use your notch trowel to further mix your resin together and mix the paint into your resin while you're spreading it over the surface of your substrate substrate we're going to use the term substrate You're spreading your resin around you just want to bring it just to the edge but not over so that as much of your product stays on the surface as possible you don't want it to roll over just yet as soon as you like give resin a way out it's gonna take it and since this is a table we don't really have that much control over how level it is it's as level as we can get it but any percent off will make the resin run off since it's self-leveling it's going to try to find the lowest point and get there whenever you mix your resin always put the thinner of the two in first that'll help um, when you mix your parts together to um, fully incorporate and not just stick to the side. So the thinner one in this case is part B, which is the hardener. B, you just want 16 more ounces or um, more than that? Yeah, because it's just gonna be some white filler. Okay. So it's a lot, a lot brighter. Jess, I didn't even think about that either, but someone asked me which to put in first, and for a while, I was like, it doesn't matter. They're all getting mixed together. And then I found out that you want the thinner one first, and that'll help it not to stick to the edges of the bucket. When you mix your resin, you're going to notice some bubbles appear. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, we're going to pop those with the heat and with um, some alcohol spritz later. So nothing to be concerned about. Also, if you're sensitive to smells, although this is, um, I can't smell anything with it, and I've never had a reaction or a problem with this resin. 
everybody's different. So if you feel that you need some kind of respirator and like long sleeve shirts, um, protect yourself if you're, you know you're sensitive. So the first layer, we put a little bit of white to make it the color we want. For this um, batch, we're gonna add a little bit more white to make it more opaque and brighter so that it gives a, an extra depth. Be careful not to overload your resin um, when you do this at home because you're because um, that'll change the chemistry of your resin and it will thicken up on you really fast if you have too much. It could seize on you. It could turn into marshmallow fluff. Just always remember you can add more. You can't take it away. You can kind of see there the difference in the first white and the second one that we are now applying. Just a little bit brighter, a little bit more random. So what are you doing right now, B? I'm gonna add just a little bit of this black here a little bit of this white so we can make very faint gray uh, veins See, look at that I'm gonna make a nice nice gray vein so that it's very light very whoops um, subtle very subtle like it's underneath because that's if you look at granite, you can see how, like, the layers and layers of it uh, from the bottom to the top of the piece. So I'm just going to randomly... Which need? I'm going to take my shoe off. So we're just going to go... Great already. Whenever you're doing anything that you're adding lines to, um, try to start mostly off of the piece. That way you don't have like blurbs. Unless you want blurbs. Unless you, you want, want blurbs. A little bit, a little bit bigger at one point so that it looks like it's kind of going out from that. That's fine. But normally with art, you, you kind of want to start off to the side so that this side isn't just, you're not wasting a bunch of paint right here because it's going to go off anyway. So just kind of. So your line starts a little more. Right. But for marble, for example, it's okay to have these because would, we're going to roll have, it. Yeah, like, because you don't know where that, this heavy piece comes from. It could be darker way down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then this is just coming through and up. I think this is good. Yeah, I'm going to roll that. I want it to be super light. So, what are you doing now? Right now, I'm gonna I'm soaking this little roller in the same color resin, so that when I put this down, it doesn't just soak up all the resin. I'm gonna roll this so it kind of lightens these lines up and blends them into the blends them into the white, so you can get layers. 
normally how it works. Sometimes it does not. So we'll see here. Use the edge a little bit. Gives it that awesome marble look. Come off to the side a little bit if you want. Just feathers it out and kind of trails it, that, it. Yeah, it gives it that nice kind of chaotic but nice granite fade. And you'll see like that texture of the streak that came through, but that will settle in. See that? Well, he's in the way, but you can see kind of the texture from the roll, but that will settle in and sink. So that won't be evident. If you think about it, marble is obviously made by nature and nature is very random. Very random. It's <laughs> perfect in its imperfection. So you don't want to be like too linear or too, um, what's the word? Too refined with it because it's not supposed to be. It's also super important to pre-soak your roller so that it doesn't just pick up all of your resin and paint the first time. So right now Jeff is also rolling the edges so that we can continue the design over the sides a little bit. Just, you wanted some darker parts as well, right? Oh yeah, there's gonna be. I just wanted to clarify before we did it that she didn't just want like soft. What's next? So we're just building the color now. Basically layering up like how marble would be. Building color like this even makes those like faint lines look even better. So this roller is preloaded with the first gray that we did we don't want to load it with this darker one because it'll make the white marble turn into not white marble anymore it'll get too muddy so since the roller is already preloaded from the first time around we're just going to jump straight into rolling the new lines Also, sometimes Jeff doesn't use the whole roller base. He just uses the edge because... I think sometimes it like takes too much off and then it the, the edge will just grab some of it and then you can just kind of come off for, for that extra little crazy little vine. Fade. Yeah. And you can't really see it. But it but makes a there. difference. It definitely makes a difference. And if it looks too straight or too stagnant, just get in there and make a new line. Just, you know, maybe come off one area. Like if there's another part growing inside of there or something. Sounding like Bob Ross now. This is just a happy little crack of the marble. 
Happy crack. <laughs> it's bananas. All right, so now I'm going to take some of this white. We're going to go. Speak up. And, huh? Speak up. We're going to take. I want to heat some of this up. This is. Why, but I guess I just see all these bubbles. So now we're going to add some heat to it. And what this does is it pops all the bubbles that we mixed in. You can see them here, this texture. We need to. Also, be careful when you're using a heat gun or a torch or any heat source because obviously it gets really hot and you don't want to injure yourself. I am proof that injuries do happen. Injuries do come true. They do. And it's not a good time because they look like this. This is actually the front of one of those from a countertop that we were doing in Maryland. It was a good time, even though I got injured. Let me be a lesson to you all to just stay safe out there. Also, um, there's so much trash in there. Mm -hmm. this just the first layer. Um, when you do this, be careful not to add too much heat because you don't want to scorch or burn your resin. Additionally, you don't want to thin your resin out so much that it rolls off of your surface. The hotter it gets or warmer it gets, the thinner it gets. And the thinner it is, the more fluid it will be. So just keep that in mind when you're using your heat. Are you doing any design elements with this right no, now? Not yet. I just wanted to. I just wanted to see if there's so much. <laughs> we need some tweezers. Jess, do you have any tweezers that you don't mind getting resin on? Um, I do. Um, do you want me to pop the bubbles over here? Um, no, because I don't think it's gonna matter now that I like look at it. I was just worried, like, there's this. I'm just worried about all that. She's getting tweezers. I'm just going to put this white in here. Okay, so talk um, through why you're adding white right now. I'm going to add white just to give it a little bit more contrast. So it looks like there's a little bit brighter marble, you know, like the original marble coming through and, and, and maybe put some extra little veins and lines so that it's just not white, white, white. Like it'll be a little bit stark, brighter kind of thing. And that's the thing with this, is you can go over lines with the white. You can kind of make your own little cracks, go next to the big ones, give it a little contrast, like I said. pick out any trash that may be in this. Obviously, um, after this sets, we're going to do a clear coat and a lot of this stuff's going to get buffed out. But if it's like a hair or like a dark hair or something like that, even if you um, sand it down and not have a texture, you may still see it. So I'm trying to remove those as he goes. When you do a countertop, it's almost impossible to not get something to land in it because you're in an open space, it's hard to cover it. So you kind of just have to roll with it. Don't get all worked up if something lands in it. There's always a fix. I'm going to take black and put it 
in the parts where I'm going to take the heat and kind of blow over the, so it starts to mix in like marble. Sometimes it's hard to tell what is something and what's bubbles. See, I was like laying that flat, like, mm -hmm. like a crazy little edge. Get it that unhuman touch. crazy how much you think you need to mix up especially with a color like this like the black you you need maybe two to four ounces like because you're not pouring it on you're putting it on with a little stick and you know you're controlling it and you don't need a lot to control it so you don't want to put too much because then your white marble is going to turn into black mush and look at that If you're using a powder, get it out of the way of any blowing air so you don't have an accident. It's not a fun accident to have. Look, I'm piping resin. <laughs> Be careful. Don't it in the I love these like dual lines. We have lines. The great thing about this is, is I can stop sweeping it and be done with an area. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to continue the line the whole way. The new thing, piping resin. So what are you doing? I'm adding this a little, this white just to make it a little brighter. See if that'll give it a little bit brighter, like veins in there. Now that we have all this dark in there. So if you guys are wondering what I was doing a second ago, I took a regular Ziploc bag and I mixed my silver resin on the side and I poured it into this bag. And then I just took some scissors and cut off just like the smallest tip of it so that I can just pipe the resin on much like you would do a cake if you were a baker, which I'm not. And while he's adding that brighter white, I'm just going around and picking up anything extra that have, may have landed in the surface. Since we're using a whole bunch of air, that tends to kick up things in the room. Are you like witnessing this coming together like slowly but surely? I'm just amazed. <laughs> well, thanks. I didn't even want that, but I'll take it. <laughs> it's like an art piece, but also a table, and it's just wonderful. It's functional art. Yeah. Wait till we spray this silver on there. So while he's doing that, I'm just going to take you guys down on a little adventure so you can see some true color areas. Uh, that silver is 
sparkles and just pops. Not amazing. Completely amazing. So take some of your white that you've put down, heat it up and, and maybe you know blow it over some black or blow it over the the off gray so that it, you know gives it that mixed in look. It's a little artsy. Like like if you're like trying to make cells, just kind of blow it into the other part. So it just kind of fades in. So it's, if you don't want that a really harsh white line, which this will all kind of just kind of fade together anyways. See that? It just kind of melts together. Hit this little blurb. I'm going to show you all this super awesome silver. It just floats up to the surface. Now, if you do use a metal flake like that, you have to be careful when you sand it down for your next layer or if something lands in it because it is um, very light, so it floats. And if you sand it, you'll sand all of that awesome, like, glowing silver you'll sand it off so either just don't sand in those areas or just don't sand in those areas that's really the only option you have because if you sand it at all it's gonna come off so just sand in the big patches that aren't like that and just know every time you lay some resin down make sure you put heat over it because there's bubbles in that you don't want to leave that because when you come back the next day that little line that you leave will be a perfect little thing of bubbles you mm -hmm. don't that'll ruin your whole day so make sure if you have something this size and somebody's doing something just get an area move up get an area move up get an area just kind of do it in a section so you're not just sporadically going everywhere so you make sure you hit all those spots have a system so that nothing's left unpopped. Now, since we are going to spritz some silver over it, that's going to be another way the, the bubbles are going to pop because there's alcohol in our silver spray. Look at that. Look how this just glows. Love it. I will have this color available in our shop, artisttilldeath.com. Um, mid January. I'll also have a gold and a bronze. And if you use this much heat, make sure your resin is at least an hour long working time. Because if it's not, your resin's going to set up in a heartbeat and you don't want that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you, can leave, you can leave some of that, you know, an edge like that. So it gives it a nice contrast and hard edge to where that's, you know, where it's been cut. And that is the dark part, and then those are the lighter parts that's kind of coming through the marble. Other than that, this is pretty smooth, man. 
this trash a little bit, but whoo. Yep. Okay, boys. Puppies in the house. I think I want to do more more white in the big spots. I really like like this subtle white that's like crossways. That's what I'm saying. Like I want to do like kind of a bigger puddle and smooth it out so that you know it's like it's not just a you know more natural. If there's something that's breaking that up a little bit. Well, you've got some that's white what, here, and you've got all this clear left right here. Yeah, we have quite a bit. I'm gonna put you guys back in this tripod. Voila. So now that he's popped all those bubbles, I can really see what is a flaw. And I can go ahead and get those out. And also what you can do, take your hand in the white and just kind of hit this side. Just tap the side just so that you know all of this is covered. So then you can come back with your gray or your dark gray and just kind of run it off the side so then it gives it that illusion that, that that's that dark part that's, you know, inside the, the stone. There you go. And well, and you can hit that with the heat gun and it'll really make it run down. So it'll look really nice. Get all of this that I just put down. Remember, have a little system to where you know you're going to hit all of these bu bubbles. Is, is this new resin that you just put down. And you want to kind of get rid of some of those hard lines if you want. See, that's what makes these really nice, like, marble effect when you push the heat down and it kind of goes out. It kind of goes out and then it'll come back in and gives it that nice fade. Just be careful when you're doing that um, because if you scorch that resin, it's going to set up and dry out and look like a scaly patch. It's not a good look. If it boils, You've done too much. So what you do, heat it up a little bit, go go to some other area, heat that up a little bit, heat up around it, so then when you do heat that part, the part around it will be a little bit heat up as well, so then it gives, it's easier for it to move, and then you're just, you're basically just moving it with the air. The best way to do this is to let this dry for like three days and then sand it and put matte finish over it. And it looks like, you don't, you don't have to if you want it shiny. But then it looks just like marble because it's matte. It makes it look almost heavy. Like I've done that with a couple pieces. So what are we doing right now right here? Um, we're adding some metal silver powder to some alcohol to make a very amazing uh, effect. Um, you always want to put a little bit more powder than you think just so that you know that it's going to be opaque and, and a, uh, a good spray. Do a couple more. You're not trying to fill it up or anything. You just want to. You really need to saturate it with the color that you're using. 
So, you think it's going to take away from the I don't know. white? No, I just think that if we just thin it out a little more, I think it was just, there's a lot in there, so. And if we just do it, like, if we just go, just kind of like, a, and then heat it up, kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to spray the entire thing. I just want to spray it like, you know what I mean? Or do you want to just kind of. I was thinking mist it. it, but if you want to do like a hard line, then. That's pretty soft. See, there's not a lot of, that's a little hard, but I don't think that would matter. Like that, just kind of, ready? Yeah. If your sprayer starts to mess up, stop spraying and spray on something so it, does, it gives it a good even spray. Take your heat gun, break this up a little bit, heat that up. And all that resin will come through there. And give it that old style. Old style, old style marble. I kind of like these like Me too. dots in motion. It, it makes it like it's a, 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 what do you call it, like a, uh, it's just like a natural pattern. So we're choosing to use a heat gun for this because we want the heat as well as some like blown air. You can use a torch, um, but the torch moves resin from basically intense heat. So if you're worried about scorching your resin or your resin heating up too fast or whatever, um, heat gun may be the way to go for you. Any novice, I would definitely say heat gun over torch. So I think the table's slightly tilted this way because of these um, these ones think? and yeah, these here. No drips over here. So yeah, I think I we're gonna have. Quite a bit. Mm -mm. I think it's tilted. We may have but to put a couple thing. popsicle like, sticks under. What if we like? I can't like put it on that. there now. 
So then it gives it that. Do you want to try to pick it up and? I don't know. Let's attempt to tilt. Yep. So it's not too off, but I feel like just a couple of popsicle sticks should be good to blow up. How amazing did this table turn out?